So I calculated how much suspension travel we can have with these shocks. These have 14 inches of total suspension travel and because we're mounting them a little bit higher on the trailing, it's not quite halfway, but it's almost halfway. The, I calculated that we, ha we would have a total of 24 inches of suspension travel with these shocks. And I'm trying to think like, is that enough? Is that enough suspension travel with this setup? And I'm like, I'm not sure because if you guys remember, these are the, sh the front shocks off the VF1000 project, that project that I built years ago and it's, we're not doing anything with it, it's sitting outside and it's slowly becoming a parts vehicle. And I do have the rear shocks off of that project, which have a, which have 16 inches of travel. These have 14. So we could use those and get even more travel out of this setup. But we, we kind of need to first see if these will work. So what we're going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift the, the, uh, the trailing arm all the way up to where the bump stops are going to be collapsed. We're going to measure the distance between here and here. We're going to put the tires on. We'll lift the frame up to where that distance now has another 14 inches. And we'll see like how tall is the frame sitting, what angle the trailing arms are at. And we'll kind of see like can it go more? Do we want more travel out of, the, out of this setup? And we'll kind of judge from there. And if we want more suspension travel out of this, we can use the longer shocks, but if these are long enough, then, then we'll just use these. But I, I'm trying to get as much suspension travel out of this setup as possible. All right, so the bump stops are gonna collapse right, right about, right about there. So that is 16 inches to the middle of the tubing. So, write that down. I am putting a lot of trust into the rafters in this shed to not come crashing down. I mean, I don't think I don't think this is that heavy. Let's just keep an eye on them. Don't want the roof come crashing down. All right, so we're aiming for 30. We're at wow, 25. Keep going. Wow. Look at this. <laughs> oh, man. All right, is that 30 yet? 27 and a half. It can still keep going. Yeah, I don't think we need those longer shocks. 29. We're almost, almost there. Twenty-nine and a half. Keep going. There it is. <laughs> that is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna need those longer shocks. I think this is plenty. I think this is plenty of suspension travel for this. That really looks ridiculous. I mean, the rear of the frame almost is as tall as me, so it's like the total opposite of Carolina squat. What would this be called? Doggy style? Yeah, two feet of suspension travel may not sound like much, I guess, but what? once you see it, yeah, this is plenty. This is plenty of suspension travel. So we're we're probably gonna ha have to limit this. There's no way this is usable. And I may uh, I may lower this a little, we don't need this much. So we, I may lower this so, to get it to where when the bump stops collapse, the shocks aren't collapsed as well. So.
I really wish we had more travel in the front. Alright, let's finally let's finally lower this thing down. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, 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 uh, I was hoping it was going to sit a lot lower with the suspension. It didn't really go down that much. Yeah, the springs may be a little too strong. Yeah, this thing is, uh, this thing's really gonna need some sway bars. So now I'm glad that we're putting the gas tank in the back of this thing to get just a little bit more weight on the back of this to hopefully get the suspension to sag a little bit better or a little bit lower. Because uh, you, you definitely don't want the ride height of something like this being this tall. This would make it to where it's like really top heavy and just, you know, tipsy and everything. Worst case, what we can always do is just play around with the spring rates on these shocks. The spring rates on these right now are uh, 250 and 200, so we could always get softer springs. But I keep having to tell myself this thing's not done yet. We're going to be adding more stuff here and there. We're going to add the gas tank, got to add the wiring, the headers, mufflers, got to add everything we need to get this thing running and working properly. So we are adding more weight to this, and maybe once we're done, this thing will sag a little bit lower, but uh, if, if not, we can always play around with the spring rates. And also, there is no uh, there is no preload on these springs right now. I know it looks it, but uh, it's right now this is just there's no there's no preload on these springs. If I raise this up any, it just makes it to where the springs, if the shocks are fully extended, uh, they can you know they have play in them and everything. So, but yeah. I really wanted to see this thing outside for the first time, but right now it's dark, it's raining, so hopefully we can do that tomorrow. So, in the meantime, I think let's wor let's start working on getting the steering installed. Let's install the power steering and get it connected to the rack and pinion. So, I, I think this will work. I don't know, it, it's a little sketchy, I'll admit, but I think, I think this will, as long as I go slow and take really light cuts, I think this will be fine. Is I really want to machine this to uh, final diameter and machine the, uh, machine it so the steering wheel isn't wobbling or anything, so I'm, I'm going to go really slow and really easy with this, and I, I think that, I think this will work. It'll be fine. Uh, let's go slower than that. How's that? Is that slow enough? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little sketching me out. So I'm gonna pull the motor off. I think this will, this will. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Yeah, that's that's a lot safer. That was before it was uh. That was, that was sketching me out.
That wasn't so bad. So I made this jig to hold this thing in place so I can figure out where I want it and I think it's I think it's just, it's good right here. I was going to try and see if I can make it like adjustable up and down back and forward, but that's just we don't need that. That's a little too that's just adding too much complication. So let's just uh let's just put it right here. Let's just make it make sure it's in the middle and then just put it right here. So I'm trying to figure out how to connect the rack and pinion to the power steering. Now obviously it would make sense to just have a piece of round stock going from there to there and then boom, they're connected, but that's, that is in the way of the radiator that I'm trying to put right here. Now this is the radiator that I bought for this thing. This one right here, it is uh, it's the same size as the one for the CBR1000, but it is triple core. The one for the CBR1000 is double core, so I wanted to get one that was bigger, but I didn't want to try to have to make a bigger one fit in here. So I found this that is triple core, so hopefully this, this will have better cooling capacity for uh, being able to go, go slow, because I do want to kind of be able to rock crawl with this thing, if it can do that, so therefore we can be going at a slower speed and blah blah blah. We need a big radiator. So, but having the steering column right there makes it to where we can't really. It's it's in the way of the radiator. So I don't want to have it to. What I what I could do is just mount this radiator to the side a little bit. But that's that it, it, it's driving me nuts. I I hate I can't stand when stuff's not in the middle of of the frame. I don't like it when it's not symmetrical. Driving me nuts looking at this with, with it off to the side. But that would that does make it to where it would be easy to mount the radiator, easy to mount the uh, the steering column, but I don't know. I just I don't like it. I don't I don't I don't like it being off to the side. So I think the best way to do this, because also, what I don't want is, because the radiator fan is going to be here, I don't want the radiator blowing hot air in the face of the driver and passenger, and, I, you know, driving in the summer is hot enough, I don't want a radiator blowing hot air on me, so I kind of want to angle this thing downwards, and then I can put some panel, because I, I am putting paneling on here, and I can kind of direct the airflow to you know to the bottom instead of you know towards the driver and passenger. So I could ang so what I'm thinking of doing is making it to where I put a second U joint in this steering column and lower it a little bit, just like right there. So therefore I can mount the radiator in the middle, angled downwards. I'm kind of liking that idea. That makes it to where I can uh, add paneling to direct the airflow downwards. It's in the middle. It also has you know plenty of room for the steering column. Yeah, I I'm I'm liking that idea. Let let's uh let's go with that. So all we gotta do is just uh, put another U joint, steering U joint, whatever they're called, in the middle of this. So therefore we can angle it more downwards. <laughs>
Check it out. The steering is working. I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised at how easy it is to turn these tires. I mean, these things are massive, and it's not, I mean, it's not that hard at all to turn these tires, which is kind of surprising. And that's full lock to one side. That's one full rotation. Two, so two full rotations lock to lock. So, it's a little bit squeaky, but hopefully once I weld this thing together, uh, hopefully that squeaking will go away. So, yeah, steering is now done. Uh, I really want to see what this thing looks like outside, so let me, I want to bring it out on the driveway. <laughs> yeah, this thing is definitely a lot bigger than the, uh, the CBR 1000. The easiest way to move something is by rotating the tire. Or oh, it's a little hard to push it up the hill. I'm using my Thor hammer as a real job. Okay, I'll we'll come back when it's on the driveway. Look at the size of this thing. It's almost as big as my truck. Man. Can't wait to drive this thing. All right, I think that's I think that's enough B-roll. Time to put it back in the garage. Oops. So I was gonna start working on maybe installing the radiator or getting the bump stops installed, but I'm a, I'll be honest, I'm a little tired of working on this thing. This is the 13th video in a row of working on this project. That is over three months of working on this thing nonstop, and I kind of I want a break from this thing. I need to work on some other things. I really need to start working on that CBR 1000 engine and get that rebuilt. And because I finally got the uh, the cylinders reboard and uh, all that done, and I've had that in a box for a month now, and I really need to start working on reassembling that thing and getting that CBR 1000 engine running and working again. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this video short. I'm gonna put this thing to the side and I'm gonna start working on some other stuff for a couple weeks, maybe even a month. And then after getting some other things done, there's another project I really wanna start. Um, we're, we're gonna come back to this thing and continue working on it. But I just, I need a little break from this thing. And now that it's, now that it's finally able to move around and I can, you know, move it, it will stand up on its own. I can now move it out of the way and work on some other stuff uh, for now. As far as the suspension, the rear is sitting really high. I was kind of expecting it to be smaller, to look smaller, you know, when it's finally outside, but it did. It looked bigger. This thing looks like almost the same size as my truck. Actually, I measured it. These tires are bigger than the ones on my truck. So I think it's just because it's the rear is sitting so tall. Maybe once the rear is, you know, down, maybe it won't look so large. The front is sitting like almost perfect. That's like perfect ride height. The rear is just way too high off, off the ground. So, you know, once we add more weight, get this thing finished. If it doesn't squat the, the suspension, I will get softer springs. And if the softer springs are too soft, I can always just, you know, uh, increase the, the preload on the shocks and we're gonna play around with it to get it to sit lower because this is not 
I mean, it's cool. It kind of looks cool, but it's just it's very large and it's very leaning to the front. So, but yeah, it is exciting seeing this thing standing up and being able to move it around for the first time and seeing its actual first steps out of the shop. But uh, for now, we're gonna take a small break from this thing. I'm gonna put it to the side and start working on some other stuff. So, guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.